Um, my phone has a problem. It Recording in progress. And the volume is not very clear. So I'll switch my video off so that I can be able to put it closer to my ear so we can be able to communicate. Um, Noltanda, will you fly the, fly the agenda, please? Yeah, the agenda is here, opening and welcome adoption of agenda, apologies, uh, remarks by the deputy minister, presentation by the department on the um, uh, report, um, and then committee deliberation and, and responses, consideration and adoption of the of the minute of the ninth, that is the agenda as it is on the <clears throat> on the table. Um, any move for adoption of this agenda? I move to present for the adoption of the agenda. Um, uh, uh, honorable billion moves. Any seconder? Literally seconds. Oh, literally seconds. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um. Or members, this is, as you know, the time of day. And uh, let me welcome the, the department, uh, the DG and the team for being in this meeting. Um, Thank you, Chair. As you know, the purpose of the meeting today is to deal with the annual performance uh, report. What happened since we passed the budget? Did the department meet its objectives mm -hmm. for this uh, finance for for the for the for the past year, and and of course including their finances. Um, are there matters? Apologies. Uh, I understand the minister is not going to be in this meeting, as he's uh, having other engagement, and uh, the DM, the deputy minister is out of the country. Um, uh, yeah, I think he's someone in mission in East Africa. Um, Nolutando, may you give us the apologies? If they are, I was just talking to this one of the ministers. If, it, if it's written, you could just read it to the members so that we are all on par about what. All right, Chair. Um, uh, by directive of the Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture, Honorable E.M. Teto, we hereby tender an apology for the uh, above mentioned meeting. Uh, the reason for the apology is that the Minister has been requested to chair the Cabinet Committee meeting on International Cooperation, Trade and Security at 8.30 and also will be chairing the joint meeting on of all cabinet committees at 10 o'clock. That's the minister's apology chair. And Thank then you. The, 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 the deputy minister's apology. I regret to advise that I shall not be able to attend the select committee meeting scheduled as mentioned above. The reason for the apology is that I'm in Tanzania for the South African cultural season held from 18 November until 4 December 2022. Network connectivity is a challenge making it difficult for virtual meetings. I humbly request that you excuse me from the select committee meeting of Wednesday, 23rd November, 2022. Okay, uh, thank, thanks for the apology, Chair. Hello? Uh, that's again. the only apologies, Chair. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, honorable members, that's the um, the correspondence and apologies from the minister. Uh, are there any comments from members? Uh, 
Uh, chairperson, my, my apologies, it's just that I'm at the airport now. Sorry for my video and uh, the background sound. Can I come in, Chairperson? Yeah, that's honorable. Is it, it, it's in two years, Chairperson? It's in two years, yeah. It's more. Chairperson? Your, your line is so bad. Yes, Chairperson, I have indicated that I'm at the airport at the moment. So my apologies for the video and the background sound, Chairperson. All right. I, 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 I just wanted to check if I can come in, Chair, for the comments. Yeah, it is open for comments about the minister and the deputy not being in the meeting. Oh, no. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Let me appreciate the, the opportunity, Chair. And uh, I say, Chair, that uh, while we note the apologies of both Minister and Deputy Minister, Chair, is that uh, the precedence that we have set uh, for ourselves is that we, the political heads of department must forever be available at our meetings when there are questions that are related to them, that are in a position to be able to respond to them. That is number one, Chairperson. Secondly, Chair, uh, I, 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 I would really appreciate your guidance as the, as the political head of the committee, Chairperson, that a, the committee meeting cannot be held ransom or be paused or be deferred to any date because of the unavailability of, of, of both the minister and the deputy minister. So I was suggesting utmost respect, Chairperson, of course, with the guidance as the chairperson of the committee, that uh, maybe we, we, we proceed with the, with the committee. Uh, yeah, that is my suggestion, Chair, but you, you will guide us as the political head of the committee. Thank you very much, Chairperson. No, thanks, Honorable Zula. I'm not the political head. I'm just the chair of the uh, select committee. Um, people coming from different parties have their own different uh, political differences. I mean, uh, preferences and yeah, and, and they are so, I cannot be the political head. I'm just the, the chairperson of the, of the select committee. Uh, yeah, having said that, uh, Honorable Tsube, is there other comments from other members? Uh, Chairperson, it's, it's Baha here. Um, my apologies, I have connectivity problems as well. Chairperson, I think that uh, I've just seen that uh, Minister Natim Tetra has joined, which um, I think for me, I was to say that if we didn't have a minister and a deputy minister, I would have said that probably let's postpone this meeting, but I've just seen that uh, the minister have just joined. Um, and so uh, maybe um, chair, just hear from him and then we proceed with the meeting. Sorry, I was I was muted. I was I was talking when I was muted. I said um, I've just seen that your name is on the on the attendance uh, the register. Honorable Minister, welcome. And and I guess that because of your apology, you are in between meetings. So can okay, we just give you an opportunity just to to say uh, some few words and then we continue with the briefing with the report. Over to you, uh, Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, Chair, uh, and uh, good um, morning to uh, everyone uh, in the meeting. Uh, Chair, I would uh, request I switch off my video because of the network uh, problems here. And just to apologize, Chair, that uh, <clears throat> uh, we had to come in late uh, like this. We, we were ready for, for the meeting, uh, but uh, we had a situation where uh, I was asked to uh, preside over meetings. Uh, as you know, the president is not around 
uh, of cabinet committees. Uh, the deputy president is not around, the acting president is engaged outside. So uh, that's why we, uh, it was not out of any uh, disrespect uh, to the select committee, but uh, it was actually um, based on the uh, objective uh, challenges we have. Uh, and uh, I must say upfront, Chair, that uh, if the meeting is not uh, finished by 11, we would uh, again ask your indulgence uh, to join another meeting. Chair, we are here today with the team from the department uh, to share with uh, you. Uh, Honorable Minister, that we appreciate that you could make time in between your your schedules you know we really appreciate that uh, thank you very much you may thank continue you so, thank you so much chair so chair we we take this uh, what we are doing today here uh, in the select committee as a very important task uh, a task of uh, showing accountability to a very important uh, body which uh, actually is responsible uh, for um uh, the fiscus uh, and therefore responsible for us executing our programs uh, as it were um, we will always uh, unless otherwise will always uh, uh, you know uh, prioritize uh, this work because for us we wouldn't know whether uh, we we are moving forward or not uh, if we are not uh, taking cue from you, Chair, and the whole of the Select Committee. So um, the Acting Director General uh, is going to make a presentation uh, on our annual report, uh, Chair, and then uh, we'll stand uh, to uh, get uh, views and guidance from you uh, in terms of uh, how we move forward as we engage uh, with, uh, the, uh, with the presentation uh, from the department. Thank you very much, Chairperson. If chair allows, uh, I, would, I would request that uh, the acting director general um, uh, does uh, the presentation. Thanks, chair. No, you're welcome, uh, Gigi. Thank you, thank you, uh, honorable uh, chairperson, and thank you the Honorable Minister, all the Honorable Members of the Select Committee. I was just showing my face, but because of the network, I will just uh, switch off the video. Um, also, uh, greetings to uh, Minister's advisors, all the senior managers of the department that are part of this uh, meeting. Without any further waste of time, uh, I hope that uh, uh, there is a member, there is a person uh, from the select committee who will be then showing our presentation. If I'm not allowed to share my uh, uh, presentation. Are you allowed to share the presentation, Ms. Ndima? Um, let me see. Can, can you see the presentation? Yeah, the presentation is on the screen, I can see. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson. Uh, this is a presentation outline. I'll go straight to the purpose of this presentation which is really to report on the 2021-2022 uh, performance and financial statements of the department, but also as the minister has uh, correctly indicated, that's part of our accountability as required by law. But also it is an, uh, to enable the committee to provide oversight on the work of the department. Now, I will go straight to an uh, 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 introduction. 
because we need to contextualize this report by just asking a question as to what characterized the year under review. We know that uh, we are also moving out of COVID where there had been a declaration of a state of emergency by our president in 2019, uh, which of course we know that uh, um, it had uh, serious ramification or negative ramifications for our performance. We also looked at issues of July unrest, which was a wave of civil unrest, which saw violence and looting in the parts of Brazil Natal and Gauteng provinces in July, 2021. Uh, that was also followed by the devastating floods in April, 2022. Um, and of course, during the time of COVID, we also had the scourge of GPVF among women, children and LGBTQIA plus persons in the country that continue to be a threat to social cohesion and democracy. But also contextualizing the work of BZEC and its delivery agents in times of COVID-19. We need to, to remind ourselves that uh, the work of the department centers around social cohesion and nation building. And that encourages the coming together of people from different walks of life. But of course, COVID was an antithesis to that coming together of people, the sharing of common spaces, regular traveling, which we do nationally and internationally as part of being connected to the entire nation as well as to the globe. We relied on other sectors, uh, the functionality of other sector, the education sector, when it comes to school sports in particular, or artists in school, we rely on delivery agents such as provinces. And of course, where there were restrictions in terms of travel, it meant that our work was adversely affected. And our beneficiaries such as artists and athletes derive their sole source of income from engaging uh, in these supported programs. Now, I would like to move straight to the highlights of the cultural and creative uh, industry sector. Of course, basing whatever I'm saying on the SACOS 2022, the South African Cultural Observatory's 2022 mapping study outcomes, which also indicated that uh, within this creative sector or cultural and creative sector, design and creative services provided 32% of the cultural and creative industry's contribution to the GDP, followed by audiovisual and interactive media at 30%, visual arts and crafts at 15%. Of course, the performance and celebration domain, as you can see, uh, honorable chairperson, contributed only 6% of the cultural and creative industries contribution to GDP, and that can be attributed to the restrictions posed by, uh, imposed by COVID-19. <clears throat> also to mitigate the high youth unemployment rate, uh, we support several youth programs, among them the debut fund program, the young patriots program, artists in school program, program just to uh, mention a few. And of course, the direct impact of the cultural and creative industries in 2018 was 74.35, uh, 39 billion, which accounts for 1.7% of South Africa's GDP. But in 2022, we see uh, increasing um, uh, figures to 161 billion, accounting to 2.97 of the South Africa's uh, uh, GDP. And of course, this increase also can be accounted uh, for in terms of the opening up of uh, the industry uh, because of uh, the disappearance or waning influence of uh, COVID-19. And also during this time, we had arts uh, banks, uh, South Africa partnered in with SIFSA uh, in the employment of 95 artists and 10 regional coordinators in the creative industries. We had 47 social cohesion di dialogues. We cumulatively produced 5,231 language practitioners with various language qualifications at both undergraduate and postgraduate levels awarded uh, 61 heritage bursaries, 34 new modular libraries and 
upgrade maintenance projects were financially supported. We saw the transformation of the naming landscape where 71 towns, three cities, six airports, over 100 villages and 40 post offices, among others, they achieve new democratic South African identities. In a way, we are saying we discarded those colonial and apartheid identities. Also, we continue to support a total in the era of sport. We continue to support a total of 37 learners who were identified during national school uh, sport championship. The Andrew Mlangeni Green Jacket Awards in honor of the country's uh, sport legend was awarded to eight beneficiaries. 2,309 learners participated in the National School Sport Championship. 4,732 schools, hubs, and clubs were provided with equipment and attire. 101,740 learners participated in the DC School Sport Tournaments. Over 2,416 teachers were trained. Over 252 jobs were created for school sport coordinators. Over 181 school sport structures were supported. And of course, over and, and, and above the support that we provide to Boxing SA, we provide a special support to the South African National Boxing Organization, SANABO, which is an amateur, amateur wing of boxing uh, in the country in response to the need to improve governance and administration in SANABO. And um, following the department's intervention, SANABO has established and managed to participate in the Zone 4 Boxing Championships in Maputo, out of the eight countries that participated, our country was ranked second after the host country, having won a total of 17 medals with five gold, five silver, and seven bronze. Continue to provide much needed support to 61 sport and recreation bodies, special for, with special focus on organizational sustainability, priority programs and projects. Over 100 municipalities were supported to technical norms and standards for sport and recreation. So it was the way of just providing the highlights. Uh, uh, then moving to uh, the performance overview 2020-21 versus 2021-2022. As you can see, Honorable Chairperson, that uh, in 2020-2021, we were at 74%. In 2021, 2022, we were at 76%, a 2% improvement in our performance. Uh, this is a, 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 a showing the number of targets that we had set and those that we were able to achieve, which was 45 overall, but we were only able to achieve 34. And then we are now, this slide number 12 is then beginning to show. Um, the those uh, um, indicators that were not achieved or targets that were not achieved. Look at the number of services modernized. The target was two, we only achieved one, so we had 50%. Number of learners in the National School Sports Championships per year, we had looked at 5,000. We we're only able to achieve 2,309, which uh, uh, gives us 54%. Percentage of national federations meeting 50% or more of all prescribed transformation uh, charter target. We set the target of 78.9%. We're only able to achieve 21. A number of community outdoor gyms and children's play parks constructed. We had set that the target of 10, but we're only able to get to six. And then the number of heritage legacy facilities, including the resistance and liberation heritage root sites developed uh, we had set ourselves the target of three. We could not uh, achieve uh, any of them. And then number of provincial community arts development programs implemented per year. We had set ourselves the target of nine, but we only achieved seven. The moral regeneration movement projects financially supported. We had set ourselves to do five, but we are unable to do that. Social compact for social cohesion and nation building. It was one, but we are unable to do that. Number of monitoring reports on the implementation of the social compact for social cohesion mission building. It was true, but we are able to do that. And then uh, program four, you look at the number of students awarded with heritage bursaries per year. We had set the target of 65, but we're able to provide 61. 
number of heritage legacy projects where exhibition content is developed. We had set the target of three, but we were able to do one. Now, the, 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 this is a program specific performance. I wouldn't really want to spend, uh, spend time. The, the honorable members can see programs, how they all performed. And then I would move to program one administration, which really whose purpose is to provide strategic leadership management and support services to the department. The sub programs that fall under these it's ministry management, strategic management and planning, corporate services, office of the chief financial officer, office of accommodation. Now, here are the targets or indicators that uh, they put the, uh, you know, for themselves. The percentage of intents enrolled against funded posts, 5% was the target, and they were able to do 5.6% uh, of intents that were enrolled, uh, that were enrolled against funded posts, and the explanation is provided the uh, chairperson. A number of model services modernized processes automated. Here it was two, as we I, I did indicate in the previous slide, that only one was achieved, but I'm glad to report Chairperson that even the one that is read now, the South African geographical name system is actually up and running. It was launched in September this year uh, uh, at, the, at the National Library of South Africa. Number of uh, sport and uh, sport arts and culture awareness campaigns acti activated to, provide, to profile the work of the department. We had set our target of nine, and we, we, we indeed uh, uh, achieved the nine awareness campaigns, sport arts and culture awareness campaigns. They are listed uh, the chairperson in the interest of time. Percentage of invoices paid within 30 days we were indeed able to achieve this. Uh, about 1,912 invoices were paid within 30 days. And the amount is stated there, which is 472,748,242 rand. And then percentage of council's boards that are fully constituted. We had set ourselves to do 100% and we were able to do that 100%. Now I move Chairperson to program two, whose purpose is to support the provision of mass participation opportunities, the development of elite athletes and the regulation and maintenance of facilities. And there are these sub programs that fall under this program, which is winning nation, active nation, sports support, infrastructure support. Let me take uh, the, the chairperson in the meeting to uh, the first uh, target 2.1, number of athletes supported through the scientific support program per year. We had set ourselves 80% as our target, but I must, I'm glad to report that we far exceeded this by about 262. Um, uh, and there are reasons that are stated there because of some of the ad hoc um, projects that were supported. And then a number of athletes supported by sports academies. We also had uh, set ourselves 3,700. And you can see that we far exceeded that by 5,159 because additional athletes were supported as a result of increased requests for support from the athletes to the provincial departments. And then we move to the number of actively participating uh, in, in organized sport and active recreation events. Here we had set ourselves the target of 330,000, but we did also here exceeded this by 2053. And we have explained that uh, quarter one performance was exceeded as participation at local level increased due to the risk adjusted strategy that allowed 500 people to gather outdoors and 250 indoors to curb the spread of COVID-19. So the easing lockdown regulations also contributed quite positively to the number that we're talking about. And then I move to the number of sport and recreation promotion and campaigns and events implemented. We had set ourselves the target of eight and we were able to do exactly that. And the list is uh, stated the honorable chairperson. Now I move to number of schools, hubs, and clubs provided with equipment and attire as per the established norms and standards. We had set ourselves 2,500. That was 
highly exceeded by 2,232. And here we're saying that following the extension of the transversal tender, the distribution of procured school, sport equipment and attire was conducted mainly in the fourth quarter by the provinces. Now I move to 2.6 number of learners in the national school sport championship per year. That was 5,000, but uh, I'm set to indicate that uh, this was not achieved. And the reason that we're putting forward is that the lockdown restrictions led to the postponement of the scheduled window winter championships in June 2021 and the summer championships in December 2021. So those are the issues that bedevil this particular target. Then I move to um, number of uh, learners participating in the district school sport uh, tournaments. The target was 75,000. We exceeded this by 26,740, also due to the opening of participation in sports and schools. And then percentage of national federations meeting 50% or more of all prescribed transformation chapter targets. That we had set 78.9, as I did indicate, we were unable to achieve this one. In the year under review, the aim was to have 15 of the 19 national federations subscribe to the transformation charter targets. From these 15 national federations, only five met the transformation charter targets. As a result, we have the, 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 the numbers that we have. And then the number of municipalities provided with technical and or management support during construction, we had set the target of 50. We're able to exceed that by 56 uh, uh, percent. And we have also clarified why. And then the number of community outdoor gyms and children's parks constructed, there were 10 that we had set ourselves to achieve, but we're only able to do uh, uh, six. Uh, that was because of protracted uh, procurement processes, which then resulted in a delay in the completion of all planned community outdoor gyms and children's play parks. Then the number of heritage legacy facilities. And um, here we were supposed to do three. Unfortunately, all these were not uh, achieved uh, because of various uh, reasons delays uh, in other areas uh, by the provincial WA. And uh, of course, the uh, contractual uh, disputes in other areas. So these are the matters, uh, by Honorable Chairperson, that we are working on to resolve this problem so that we can proceed with this project and complete them. Now I move to program three, whose uh, uh, purpose is to promote and, and develop arts, culture, and languages and implement the national social cohesion strategy. These are the sub-programs that fall under this program national language services, cultural and creative industries development, international cooperation, social cohesion and nation building, Zanzi Golden Economy, National Film and Video Foundation. I move to 3.1, which is about the number of multi-year human language technologies projects supported. We had set ourselves the target of four, but we exceeded this by two. Uh, percentage of official documents received that are translated or edited. We had set ourselves uh, the target of 100. Every time we receive those uh, uh, documents that need to be edited and, 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 and translated, we have exactly done that. We're talking about 644 documents that we received, we were able to translate and we're able to edit. And the number of bursaries awarded for the development of qualified language practitioners as per year, 250 was our uh, target, but that was far exceeded by 51. And here really it's because bursaries, the awarding of the bursaries is at the discretion of universities, depending on the cost of their courses and the number of language related modules that are being uh, requested for. And the number of local, uh, and international market access platforms financially supported, we had set ourselves the target of 12, and we were able to do exactly that uh, on our future person. And then number of capacity building projects financially supported, we had set the target of 20, and we did exactly that uh, person. And then number of provincial community arts development programs implemented per year, we had set the target of nine, 
Unfortunately, we're only able to do seven. That was because of the inadequate corroborating evidence to support work executed in the reporting period. And of course, then the indicator was declared as not uh, achieved. Now, the number of international engagements coordinated, we had set the target of 20, we're able to do 23 exceeding by three. And the reason as I've stated there is because of the additional three international engagements emanating from ad hoc projects and the department's solidarity programs were coordinated in the reporting period. Then number of molar regeneration movement projects financially supported, as I did indicate in the previous slide that was just looking specifically at those that were not achieved, who did not achieve this one. But also here, it's the inadequate corroborating evidence to support work executed in the reporting period, which was largely looking at the projects about charter of positive values, ethical leadership, GPVF campaigns, youth month dialogue, moral regeneration. And then number of community conversation dialogues helped to foster social interaction per year. We had set a target of 20, we were able to do 20. And then the number of youth focused arts development programs for was our target and we were able to do that. They are listed there on our group chairperson. And then a number of advocacy platforms on social cohesion implemented by social cohesion advocates, advocate, advocacy. 20 was our target, but we did 47. Um, and, and you can see we exceeded by 27%, uh, though it's not something to be celebrated because the reason why we so much exceeded this, we had to respond, for instance, to unrest and racial tensions in Wazulu Natal. So there was a need to intensify efforts to promote social cohesion. As a result, more social cohesion engagements were coordinated in the affected uh, province to bring it back to normality. Then uh, a social compact for social cohesion and nation building. Here also I had reported already that this was not uh, achieved because of the delays in consultation and completion of social compact for social cohesion and nation building. Then number of monitoring reports on the implementation of social compact for social cohesion and nation building. This also Chairperson was not, it could not have been achieved because First and foremost, there needed to be a social compact and then, then implementation program that could then be in, uh, monitored in terms of whether various uh, role players are doing any work uh, to speak to the social compact. Number of GPVF programs financially supported, one and uh, uh, program, uh, that, that's the program that we, we, we were able to achieve but of course it was uh, uh, characterized by three projects. It's a program characterized by three projects, which was Youth Cultural Digital and New Media Event, Senior M uh, Citizens Music Tour, Ubuntu Festival, and Sisterhood Arts Foundation. And then I moved to number of projects in the creative industry supported through the Mzansi Golden Economy Program. Here we had set the target of 67, but we were able to do 68 exceeding by one and we have provided the reason. Number of artists placed in schools per year, we had set the target of 300, and we were able to do 324 arts practitioners, uh, or 325 uh, arts practitioners were placed in schools. And of course, the reason being that some of the beneficiaries have entered into partnerships with their respective provinces, and this allowed for an increase in total placements. And then I move to uh, 3.7, the number of reports produced by SACO, South African Cultural Observatory. 21 reports were expected and we exactly uh, received those uh, or produced those reports. Then the number of films and documentaries supported telling stories of the history of the liberation and cultural and heritage importance, 10 films and we did 10 films. Then I move to program four, Honorable Chairperson, which is the last program before I allow the CFO to come in uh, with the financials. Here, this uh, program uh, is a uh, reason for existence is uh, to preserve and promote South Africa's heritage, including archival heraldic heritage, also uh, manages conditional, conditional grants to uh, uh, provinces where we give money for 
the development of new libraries. Now, the programs of programs here is heritage promotion, national archive services, public serv library services, South African Geographical Names Council. The first um, uh, uh, target here, which was number of students awarded with heritage bursaries, I've already alluded to it. We were supposed to provide 65, um, but we were, we were able to, uh, uh, what could be confirmed is uh, 61. That's why in the reason for deviation, we are saying that for completeness of reporting uh, um, and to reconcile with budget allocation, it is important to know that 60 students were supported. However, there was incomplete or inadequate evidence to substantiate support to five students and thus the target was declared as not achieved. Number of books documenting living human treasures uh, published. We had set the target of five, but we were able to do six books documenting living human treasures published. And um, this six books, um, six books instead of five were published as uh, Ms. Mulu and Mr. Semenya requested to be documented separately in their individual rights as artists, rather than to be documented as a couple. Then the number of public awareness activations on the I Am The Flag campaign, 37 public awareness activations on the I Am The Flag campaign were done, exceeding by 17%. There was a demand from provinces. The department was requested to host additional awareness campaigns, has, hence uh, exceeding the target. Now the flags are provided in schools, let's set the target of 100, but we're able to do 125 because there were requests received. Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> then the Bureau of Heraldry, Heraldry had to provide those flags. Then the number of heritage policies developed, we're able to do two as per the uh, uh, target. Workshops hosted to advance knowledge of national symbols were set the target of 10, but we're able to do, do 23 workshops. Here, Honorable Chairperson, it's just this workshop we're designed to ensure that people understand the content of all our national symbols. They understand the, the sim symbolism that is attached to each and every of our national symbols. The unit received more invitations to partner and facilitate workshops with the Department of Education. Now, the number of heritage projects where exhibition content is developed. Here we had set ourselves the target of three uh, to develop uh, content of exhibition for three projects, but we're only able to achieve one. Um, <clears throat> in the other two projects, there were delays in the implementation, uh, of course, and inadequate evidence to support the work executed in the financial year. Then the number of progress reports on resistance and liberation heritage youth sites, one report was expected and we did that report. And the number of records digitized, we had set the target of 180. Um, they are broken down there, but we were able to uh, exceed that by far, where we had 296 in access. And this uh, can be explained from the utilization of uh, um, unemployed youth who were appointed through the presidential economic uh, stimulus uh, 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 package. Number of uh, newly built and or modular libraries supported financially, it said the target of 26 and we were able to do 34 exceeded by eight. And the number of gazette notices on standardized geographical names published we had set the target of three, but we were able to do four exceeding by one. Uh, if you can allow me, Honorable Chairperson, to then uh, give over to the CFO of the department to take us through the financials. Yeah, over to you, CFO, then, sir.
colleagues is the CFO here. Yeah, we have given her, we have given the CFO a chance to make the presentation, the finances. Is the CFO muted or what? <clears throat> Noltando, can you help the, if it's possible to? Chair, let me just give the CFO, if colleagues can just give the CFO a link because I'm controlling here because I don't know for some reason he is not aware that he's supposed to present, but if you can give us two minutes, Chair, I'm sorry about that. Nomfundo, can you just pl please help if it's, there's something you can do to help? Is it possible to make the CFO the co-host? Uh, yes, Chair, Mr. Ndima is still uh, trying to communicate with the CFO. CFO will be able to join now. Now he's uh, he, he has managed to resolve what was his challenge. Uh, CFO's report. I think it will be yeah. As we as we are waiting for for the CFO to connect. If there's anyone who could take us through the report. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm trying to rescue CFO. Uh, he has been having just a small challenge, but uh, just uh, helping him because his eyesight. Uh, We are ready to start now. Okay. You no, may thanks, continue. Uh, no, thanks uh, uh, very much, Chair. Uh, uh, and sorry for for the technical uh, uh, problem that we have. Uh, I'll be presenting the uh, budget and expenditure uh, per program and, uh, and the economic classification. Next slide. Uh, well, the, the departmental uh, overall expenditure is about 5.6 uh, billion, uh, which is 92, uh, 92.2, I guess, the final appropriation of 5.7 billion at 31 March uh, 2022. And then on, on conversation of employees, you have spent about 88.6%, which is 385 million point nine, I guess, the budget of 379 million, which is an under expenditure of uh, 43 million. And then goods and services, uh, we have spent about 507 million, which is a 99.1% uh, against the budget of 512 million. And that is an under expenditure of uh, 4.7 million. And the, 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 the reason for that is that uh, uh, because of the Concord judgment that was uh, 
in place last year that said uh, we can't procure anything uh, more than 30,000 without getting a treasury approval. Uh, hence the reason for the goods and saves and expenditure. Uh, provinces uh, to municipalities, uh, that is our transfer payment. Uh, we spend about 100% and that is a transfer on the uh, mass participation and uh, conditional grant. And on the accounts and agency, uh, we have an expenditure of 1.8 billion, uh, which is 100% spent. Uh, that is what's on the PSP uh, funds that were and uh, we've got the other three entities that decline about three that of the 3.4 million that was not paid by the year end. And then a departmental agency on accounts on capital, the, the expenditure there is 297 million against the budget of uh, 301 million. And the under expenditure there is about 4.1 uh, million. And due to the Izinio, Izoko and uh, South African Library for Blind. Uh, invoice was not received by the end of the financial year, hence we could not able to pay that. Uh, next slide. Uh, higher education institution, the expenditure of 4.4 million, which is about 74% uh, of the expenditure against the budget of 5.9 uh, was spent. And then the under expenditure is about 1.5. Uh, which was based on the non-compliance of the state and Bosch University of non-compliance documents. So we could not make that payment before the end of the financial year. And then you've got foreign government and international organization, uh, which is spent 96.6%, uh, which is 5.5 million against the budget of 5.7 and the under expenditure is 193,000. Uh, uh, and that is because of the issue of uh, exchange rate that uh, go up and down. Thanks, uh, next slide. A public cooperation and a private enterprise. Uh, we spend 91.3%, uh, uh, which is 8.7% uh, under expenditure. And then the, the on financials uh, amount is 108 against the budget of 118 million. And that, that relates to transfer to beneficiary on MGE, uh, which is a cultural creative industry. And uh, then the reason has been that difficulty with obtaining compliance document. Uh, from an MGE beneficiaries to complete contract. And the capacity of the DSEC support utilized, especially around contract, it was not sufficient to meet the high volume that was faced by 21, 22 financial year. And the item creation process also took time, and hence we, we could not able to do 100% of the amount, amount uh, given to us. A nonprofit institution, uh, we did spend about 98%, uh, which is 2% under expenditure. Uh, we did have a, a last chance to the moral regeneration movement, which could not be made uh, due to non-submission of the audited financial statement in terms of the compliance document that is needed. And also committed as development program budget for under NPIs were later discovered to be departmental agency instead of uh, uh, and pay as such. And then uh, the, there was also less request uh, for the financial assistance by the sector in general. And then also under nonprofit institution capital, uh, we've got 46.2 uh, million, which is 94% uh, percent of expenditure. And then the, the, the reason for that 6% uh, uh, under expenditure, which is 2.9 million, is a uh, CAFA Seminar Foundation project complete in line with the SINI MOU, and then request to reclassify the amount of uh, Nyaga Arts Development, one of the upgrading of Committee Arts Center was declined by National Treasury. Next slide. Uh, on household, uh, the expenditure of about 44 million, uh, which we spend 92%. Uh, and then there was about uh, 3.7 million uh, that was less spent. And uh, like we are saying, that is a less in terms of requests that were made uh, for financial assistance by beneficiaries. And they were also the difficulty to obtain the compliance issues. Uh, next slide. Uh, machinery and equipment, uh, the budget there, uh, it was 24 million and we only spent 8.5 8 million, which is about uh, 20, 34%. And uh, the reason being that uh, uh, the order that was procured for the storage uh, for national ICAFs, uh, we are still we're, we're waiting for the delivery from Ireland. Uh, but because of the issue of COVID, we could not make it. 
and also uh, CETA Selector says provider for the procurement of telephone made the recommendation of DSEC to issue a purchase order for which uh, was subsequently uh, issued and DSEC is waiting for delivery of the handset and also the approval of the service provider for installation of security equipment uh, for the new floors in the new building and the approval was done in 28 March 2022. Uh, on heritage uh, asset, uh, there was an expansion of 21 million against the budget of 28 uh, and the reason being that uh, the outstanding invoice from national archives were not proceed uh, due to department of public works uh, that didn't submit that hence we could not able to pay it by the end of the financial year and also the request for deviation on procuring the sculpture from a uh, property in duly declined by national treasury for us to to, to able to spend that money and then on the building and a uh, fixed structure, uh, an expenditure of 26.1 million uh, was spent uh, 100%. So there is no uh, reason for an expenditure. The payment on financial asset, that is our add off. Uh, we spend about 11.8 million. Uh, next slide. And then that is, this is a, a expenditure pattern a per program. Uh, under administration, uh, we spend uh, 92%. Uh, which is 37.1 million under expenditure. Uh, recreational and sports, uh, we have spent 98.5, uh, which is 20% uh, under expenditure. Arts, uh, culture, and promotion, we spend uh, 121.2 billion, which is against the 97% the spent with the under expenditure of 31 million. And then heritage uh, with a budget of 2 billion. We have spent about 2.5 billion, which is 99.5%, and the total there is 98.2% uh, uh, on overall budget. Economic classification, composition of employees, next slide. Uh, we have spent uh, 335 million with an under expenditure of 43 million, which is 886 uh, a percent and goods and services we have spent 99 percent which is 507 million and then a transfer payment uh, we have spent 4.7 billion uh, which is 99.3 percent and with the 32 million under expenditure uh, next slide uh, payments for capital asset uh, that we have spent uh, 56.2 uh, million uh, against the the budget of 79 million which is 70 percent and the 23 million is under expenditure uh, payment on the financial asset uh, we've got 11 uh, million and uh, the the expenditure is also 11 million which is 100 percent on overall departmental uh, expenditure we spend 98.2 uh, 98.2 percent thanks very much uh, That will be the, the end. I've already talked about the program uh, performance uh, on the higher slide. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The... That, that's, that brings our presentation to an end. Yes, yeah, uh, thank, thanks, DG, and thanks to the, the CFO and your team. Are there other additions from, from members of the team? If, if not so, honorable members, that's the presentation. Uh, <clears throat> that's how we worked in the last uh, year. Um, I just want to, to check for, for myself, uh, um, TG, that this, um, there are international treaties that you have talked about and uh, policy regulations, and of course, some bills. Um, can you provide a brief update, uh, update on the following within the context of public participation uh, completed? You know, uh, we did, was public participation completed on this? If not so, you know, why wasn't it done that way? And what is this that we need to do to improve on that? The National Sports and Recreation Amendment Bill 2021, the South African Institute for Drug-Free Sport Amendment 2021, South African Geographical Names Council, 
bill 2021. And uh, if you look at the renewal report, uh, it knows that these regulations are to be reviewed I know, right. after the National Sports and Recreation Act has been amended. Uh, bidding and hosting of international sports and recreation events regulations 2010, recognition of sports and recreation bodies regulations 2, 2011, funding of sports or recreational bodies regulations 2015, safety at sports and, rec and recreational events, that is the SASRA regulations 2015. Uh, can you elaborate on the need to review this regulation? What challenges are being experienced because these regulations have not been um, these regulations have not been that we just check my name. This regulation uh, no, these regulations haven't been reviewed according to the report that we uh, what has the department done to overcome the above mentioned challenges while awaiting the National Sports and Recreation Act to be amended? That will be the first question from me. Um, other members, uh, you will indicate when you want to speak. I'll watch the, the show of hands. I see honorable um, Christians. This honorable Christians and then honorable Ndongeni. Yeah, in that order, honorable Christians, uh, the platform is yours, ma'am. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I'm also going to leave my um, video off. Um, <clears throat> thank you for the presentation. Uh, I just have a few questions, um, if the department will indulge me. On, on page 11 of the presentation, and um, the minister also spoke at length about the realization of a diverse and socially cohesive society. Now, I just want to find out a little bit more about this program because um, obviously this program has a focus on the prevalence of bullying in schools, um, gender-based violence, femicide, um, including the unrest in KwaZulu-Natal and Gauteng. Um, now, 47 social cohesion dialogues led by the social cohesion advocates were rolled out to foster cohesion in communities, according to the report on page 11. Now, my question is, what impact was achieved from um, rolling out this program in these communities and how did the individuals benefit? from this program. In other words, um, was this program rolled out successfully? And does the department think that social cohesion is um, in the right, are we on the right path in that regard? Now, with regard to social cohesion in 2023, uh, can the department give the committee access to what they are planning? so that we can engage in oversight in our respective provinces. What programs are being rolled out in our provinces, it will be, I think, um, great to, to do oversight on that. I don't think our committee has ever done oversight on any of the social cohesion engagements rolled out by the department. On page 11, <clears throat> something also very near and dear to my heart is the development of women. Now, um, it says on that report on page 11 that there is no denying that the development of women in all aspects of life is the corner, cornerstone and core value of any society. However, women are still unsupported and marginalized. Can the department tell us how does the, part, the department intend on implementing the notion of improved nurturing and clarify to us as the select committee how and when this will be implemented? Then on slide four of the notes, uh, we all know that some artists and athletes, they get their sole source of income from engaging in the department's um, supported programs. So, and we know during COVID-19, especially um, these artists and athletes um, suffered 
during that period. Now, is DSEC or DSEC supported programs occurring frequently enough to offer artists and athletes a living wage, especially post COVID? And is there any way that the department can share with us what the average income of artists is, or is it varied? Um, can they elaborate a little bit more on that? On page 80 of the annual report, the department has um, provided 30 young graduates with an opportunity to, provide, uh, to gain practical work experience in the field of study. Um, it was also mentioned that interns are placed for a period of up to two years. Now, I think it's very important for our select committee, especially to know where were those young graduates placed, in which provinces, you know, what are the details there with regard to their qualifications and the institutions um, where they were awarded their qualifications. And then libraries. Um, I think that we all know that currently libraries are being hugely underutilized in every single province. And on page 43, very heartening to see there that the department is fostering the culture of reading. Um, and that 93 titles have been reprinted and made available in libraries, et cetera. But can the department please elaborate and clarify links with schools to ensure that learners and teachers are aware of libraries, libraries that are available to these youngsters? And um, what is the department doing to promote the longevity and the livelihood of libraries so that learners can go back again and know that it is a safe space for them to learn and to grow? And then <clears throat> lastly, with regard to the, um, the financial report, on page 59 and 60, a very worrying is noted there that underspending is huge across the fields. Now, can the department please elaborate on the action taken by the department to overcome the challenges Re, uh, linked to this underspending. Why has this underspending taken place? 3.4 million in one program, um, the incubator program, underspent, um, the Custis Amenia program, underspent, art center programs, underspent, Nyanga arts development, underspent. What is the department doing to see to it that this does not happen and that money is actually allocated and used and utilized effectively to see to that to, to see to it that these programs actually come off the ground? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thanks, Honorable Christian. Uh, it is indeed worrying that the department will underspend when artists are starving when there is need out there to provide services you know to improve lives of our artists lives of our people the in one slide the the dg talked about um, underperformance as a result financial as a result of a judgment from the court uh, I think I'd like some more information about this one. How does a judgment in court causes you to underspend, uh, you know, on your budget? Uh, Honorable Ndongeni, your hand is up. Over to you. Thank you, Chair. I'm sorry about the video. I have a challenge of elocating. I don't know whether I'm All that. of us have that problem. Okay. Okay. Can the department please brief update on the following within the context of public participation completed? National Sports and Recreation Amendment Bill 2021, South African Institute for Drug Free Sport Amendment 2021, South African Geographical Names Council Bill 2021. The annual report notes that these regulations are to be reviewed after the National Sport and Recreation Act has been amended. Beating and hosting of international sport and recreation events regulation 2010, recognition of sports and recreation bodies regulation 2011, 
funding of sport and recreation body, bodies regulation 2015, safety and safety and sports and recreation events regulation 2015. Can you, the department please elaborate on the need to review the regulations? That's my question. The second one, what challenges are being experienced be, because these regulations have not been reviewed? What has department done to overcome the above mentioned challenges while awaiting the National Sport and Recreation Act to be amended? The second one, Chair, the strategic plan 2020-2025 knows that the sector needs to decide if the white paper on sport and recreation and the white paper on arts and culture will be used as separate policies or a combined policy document to the SAC sector. The two white papers will have to be checked to ensure that they do not contradict in any way the extension of the mandate of the Ministry of Sports, Arts and Culture. Please update the committee on the decision taken and progress made with the two white papers mentioned. The last one, Chair. Mm. On page nine of the annual report, notes the following. We are finalizing the process of drafting the theater and dance policy. Furthermore, we will very soon be embarking on the development of strategy and policy in literature, visual arts design and craft and standardization of funding policy. Can the department provide further details on the pro progress of the of development of strategies and policies in literature, visual arts design and craft and standardization of the funding policy? Thanks, Chair. Or numbers is there another hand? Um, the other thing I'd like to know from you, DG, it's a uh, this thing here inadequate collaborative evidence. What does it really mean? Because it appears about four or five times in the in your presentation that you know in slide 37. Um, there's no, you know, uh, in, uh, there's inadequate collaborative evidence. And then um, the other the slide 52 and slide 66, all of them talk about that. Um, now, I just want to know what does it mean when you say there is inadequate evidence? Who's supposed to collect that evidence? We're supposed to store that evidence and ensure that the evidence is there. And then what happens then if there is inadequate evidence, what kind of action is it going to be taken to ensure that we get adequate evidence to prove uh, our expenditures and you know that we we have uh, you know actually delivered on on what we said will will we, we, will, we will deliver on. Uh, well, uh, like we're looking at the project that we implemented by the moral degeneration. I think uh, Honorable um, um, Christian has touched also on that one. I just want to check what is this, what does it mean, and what, what needs to be done to ensure that when our books are looked into, all evidence will be available to prove that we have done the right things and we have done them the right way. Um, are there further hands from the members? In the absence of any other hand, I'll give over to the department to respond. Can and I members have can one still question? have a second Sorry. bite. Can I have one question, Chair? Yes, I want to do it. Okay, thank you, Chair. On page seven of the annual report, note the following, the department in partnership with the Oral History Association of South Africa and the Free State Provincial Archives hosted the 18th annual National Oral History Conference from 13 to 15 October, 2021 in Clarence Free State. The conference was covered 
and broadcast live by the Free State online channel, which link with the following community radio station. Motio FM, Masupatile FM, The Rock, Kwakwa FM Radio, Rose Data, Sesoto FM, Ditabeng FM, and Metzima Holo FM. Can the department elaborate on the actual number of individual reached via the Free State online channel? And elaborate on the actual number of individual reach via the community radio stations. Was an impact assessment opinion survey conducted to establish this perceived value of turning in to the conference via the platforms made available? What lessons were learned from the partnership and how will these lessons be used during the planning and implementation phase of the next and future conferences? Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Honorable uh, Dongene. Um, yes, DG, if you may respond to, to, to the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, just to indicate that I am um, accompanied by uh, colleagues here who would be speaking to different areas. I would. Uh, request that uh, colleagues uh, speak to issues of sport and recreation and all the, <clears throat> the, the rules and the regulations that uh, need to be amended as well as the bill. I can, uh, and then I would also request that uh, Didi Chichikwadamba speak to issues of social cohesion, dialogues. Uh, I noted that there are issues of artists and also Didi Chichikwadamba, you could also touch on uh, matters of women as raised by the honorable member of the committee and uh, Charles uh, also on artists and the income uh, that they uh, are getting. And then on libraries, I would request uh, Mr. Kekane to then talk to issues of libraries as well as the oral history uh, conference that the honorable member has asked about. And Charles will also touch on the theater and dance policy. Um, and I think colleagues can also touch on the matter that has been raised sharply by the chairperson on of inadequate collaborating evidence. I'll touch on one, but colleagues can also just look at the, some of the areas uh, of, their, of their performance where this issue of uh, uh, collaborating evidence becomes uh, important. Maybe let me start by indicating uh, that the South African Geographical Names uh, uh, Bill I think this is it's a it's in the process of of of, of uh, consultation. The council, the South African Geographic Names Council, uh, is looking at the bill. Has also been doing consultation provincially, so that uh, we close all the gaps that we have seen in the implementation of that particular bill. Uh, it's one of those bills that we need to see uh, going to cabinet. Uh, in 2023, uh, ultimately going to, to parliament because uh, that, that is their final destination. Now, let me come to issues of uh, inadequate collaborating evidence, uh, 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 Chair, Chair Pansi. I'll make an example of uh, bursaries, granting of bursaries to students. We are dependent on universities providing information for us to conclude the MOAs with the uh, universities. Sometimes we have to chase them and uh, when it's late towards the end of, of, of the financial year, our legal services say, but it doesn't make sense to them getting into a contract when already it's towards the end of the year. Now, in terms of our technical indicator descriptor, which is a source of evidence. If you don't have that MOA, you might have given the 65 bursaries, but in terms of evidence, like the MOA doesn't exist. And therefore it means you have not achieved that because there is something that was supposed to be that kind of evidence, but the, the, it doesn't exist. Now I'll make also another example. So when it comes to issues of Mzansi uh, Golden Economy, we could do that at the first transfer, um, which is kind of 90% uh, project has been funded. 
The fact is you have funded the project, but because you would need also to get the report um, from the beneficiary before you do the next uh, final payment, you don't get that. Uh, you cannot the claim that you have achieved because achievement means total disbursement of the funds. But it creates that situation as if nothing has happened and yet 90% had already been, been paid. Uh, now, I would like to stop there and allow colleagues to speak to uh, most of the issues that have been raised and I will come in where needed, uh, Jefferson. Thank you. But colleagues can also touch on their respective areas of work where the issues of inadequate collaborating evidence uh, become an issue. Thank you. Uh, maybe let me just start by Mr. Mube, so that maybe I, I leave that chair person to yourself. You are muted, Mr. Mube. Oh, sorry, apologies uh, for that. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, DG, and uh, good morning to the Honorable chairperson and the members of the committee, as well as the uh, DDGs on the platform and the colleagues from the department. There were questions, um, uh, Honorable Chair, Chair posed around the various uh, pieces of Uh, which requires, as well as uh, the, as a result, also needs to be. Uh, your line is getting. Your line is uh, getting. Is, your your line is getting so bad. If you could switch off the video, maybe it will make it better. Uh, Chair, can you can you hear me? I have switched off the video. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, can you hear me? I've switched off the video. No, yes, I do. You are very audible now. Thanks. Okay. Thank continue. you very much, Chair. Apologies for that. I, Chair, I was um, uh, basically just uh, summing the there are questions around the legislation um, uh, 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 within the space of sport and recreation. Um, some of the questions, how I'm going to answer them is uh, basically there's a main uh, uh, um, act, which is the National Sport and Recreation Act, uh, which has been going through various processes uh, um, uh, of, of consultation. And uh, I do know that uh, yesterday, although I was not part of the session, uh, there were presentation in Parliament on the National Sport and Recreation Act, which is still part of the process uh, 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 of, of getting that act uh, amended. Chair, there are a number of areas which over the years of implementing the act uh, or, or being guided by the act, we have identified to be uh, uh, deficient in some way or the other. I may not go through all of them, but I think as a way of example, for instance, uh, Honorable Chair, if you look at the area of um, uh, at the area of um, uh, management or, or or dealing with uh, issues of disputes and other related uh, matters, um, we are often uh, found. Uh, uh, wanting because of the deficiencies within the act uh, in the sense that uh, they, they, there is no provision for any other mechanism uh, to settle those kind of, of, of disputes in a much more quicker manner uh, uh, <clears throat> in a way that avoids a situation where more and more federations take their matters to court. So there is, for instance, the recommendations of uh, establishment of the tribunal uh, as one uh, such example. There are then, Honorable Chair, a number of regulations that 
have become by virtue of their age, almost uh, not completely obsolete, but um, they are beginning to show deficiencies in terms of responding to certain prevailing situations. To cite just an example, Chair, the regulation, the, the, the recognition of sport and recreation bodies regulations, um, things have changed in the area of sport. You now have new forms of sport, such as uh, electronic sports, the so-called e-sport, and other emerging types of sport, which uh, when you look at the regulations, they, they, the regulations didn't provide for such at the time when they were actually uh, 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 developed. So it is, it is necessary to then update these regulations so that you can be able to respond to those ever-changing uh, uh, um, needs on, on the ground. If I were to chair, zoom into the South African uh, uh, Drug Free Sport uh, Institute for Drug Free Sport Act, uh, chair, the, the amendment really is, is prompted by the, the promulgation, or shall I say, the publication of a revised um, a WADA code by the World Anti Doping. Uh, organ, uh, um, agency. Uh, it, 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 it basically, it, 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 there is a need there to make sure that we align our uh, national uh, legislation on anti-doping with the World Anti-Doping uh, uh, Agency code so that uh, there are no gaps and then also to prevent a situation where most of the uh, People who may be found in the wrong side of the law, in terms of the of the code, uh, find loopholes which uh, may derail the process of our fight against uh, uh, anti-doping, particularly in South Africa, so that we can make sure that our teams are always clean. Uh, Chair, uh, without to taking too much time, I thought I would cite some of the examples um, which uh, are prompting a review of these regulations and the review of some of the pieces of legislation that are, um, <clears throat> are critical for, for the smooth running of sport in, in the country. Obviously noting that some of the, re, uh, of the regulations are dependent on the main legislation for them to be, to be reviewed, particularly where there may be deficiencies in terms of the empowering provisions within the the principal uh, 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 legislation. Thank you very much, Chair. I hope I have uh, uh, addressed the key things and the questions that uh, were related to particularly sport and recreation. Thank you. Chair, I would request that uh, we give uh, DDG Chikwadamba an opportunity to then address matters of social cohesion and then of programs that have to do with the empowerment of women. And then immediately after that, uh, Mr. Mabasu, uh, in that order. Thank you. Oops. Good uh, morning, uh, good day, honorable uh, chair and all the honorable members, our minister, acting teacher and uh, the colleagues. I won't stay long on my video. My network is bumpy. Uh, under social cohesion, uh, as I indicate, my network is bumpy, but I take it, I got the question in full. Uh, it was about the social cohesion uh, program uh, to say uh, what is this program about and what has it achieved? Um, this program is a program that uh, in the department uh, it started um, to be rolled out with a plan of making sure that it is rolled out to reach out uh, across all provinces. I would say uh, as from around uh, 2012. And of course, uh, as the program uh, has been um, maturing, it has been maturing uh, starting from a base of um, being driven 
uh, true uh, needs that have been identified on the ground and critically needs uh, that would have been uh, identified through some uh, social structures or uh, social uh, advocate champions uh, in the communities. And uh, out of that, there would be people who volunteer themselves to say they will uh, step in and assist in the cases where there is a need for us to come up with interventions that contribute to rebuilding and reconciliation of our society. But uh, as uh, the program got uh, formalized in the department, uh, we also took a step of formalizing a structure uh, that we could be working through uh, in our outreach through this program. Um, this structure it has been called uh, the Social Cohesion Advocates, and it is a structure made of um, uh, advocates and social cohesion champions uh, coming across uh, various parts of the country. Started with a very good representation uh, countrywide, but when it started, these were just volunteers that were doing this work. And I think um, uh, the scale of work and the cost of work uh, and uh, the attrition, because some would step off uh, from a uh, volunteerism and uh, get to formal employment. So some of the champions on the ground were, were, were lost. Uh, currently, there are about uh, 40 that we can count um, and give names to. And we have about um, 25 that I could say, uh, we can say they are active. Uh, as the numbers uh, reduce, of course, that has uh, affected the good uh, balance in terms of representation across uh, the provinces, which uh, could uh, be one of the reasons that we are saying, yes, it is true, uh, we do accept that, the, the impact of this program is still uh, unfelt in other provinces. As an example, uh, to date, uh, there are two provinces or so that don't have uh, champions, but I will speak to that because we are uh, making means to say, how do we recompose uh, and make sure that we are rebalancing things. And in other provinces, there could be champions, but uh, uh, maybe it would be one or two uh, persons. The concentration is greatly in Gauteng, um, in um, KZN. Uh, at least we have people that can reasonably work together uh, in uh, Limpopo um, and in the Eastern Cape. Um, and then as well, other provinces, they have uh, also taken upon themselves as provincial departments to say they will also model what we are doing and start having their own social cohesion advocates. We've seen a, a free state as an example, starting to do that. So uh, at the start, informed by how this uh, uh, evolved, the, the focus has been greatly on uh, women empowerment and gender uh, equality, uh, children's rights issues, uh, including pan positive parenting, which should also include as well uh, a focus on youth, uh, disabilities and the rights on the elderly, uh, social inclusion and community building, um, community development uh, and safety, where there would be some facilitation as well uh, in terms of peace building, uh, facilitation, activities in the cases where social uh, justice is, uh, is, is disturbed or there are some unrest uh, activities. Uh, of course, we have seen some of the social cohesion advocates also bridging uh, bridges in terms of uh, coming up with programs that speak to, that speak oh. to issues of inclusion. Um, on that note, on that note, the work that has been done, I, I could say it's work that has shown itself very much, uh, if I'm saying a, a response to what has been the impact. 
We've seen the impact very strongly when the and don't any moves for the adoption chair. You. when where there are cases for, for social unrest, and we have seen the social coercion advocates coming strongly there. Uh, as an example of that uh, has been the unrest that took place in, in KZN last year. As an example are the unrest uh, where there have been some taxi feuds and we've seen the social coercion advocates coming in there and facilitating uh, uh, situations in there. As an example, we've seen uh, where there have been community unrest, as an example, in Limpopo, the, the social co coercion advocates uh, have been there. Uh, even in Gauteng, uh, we have seen them uh, where there have been unrest uh, issues uh, uh, that, that have been arising from the ground. Uh, the social cohesion uh, advocates have been there, especially in the issues of Operation Tutula. The social cohesion advocates have stepped out uh, to go and, and to play facilitation in the communities. So I, I hope, uh, Chairperson, I, I have managed to, to give uh, just a, a broad sense of uh, the work that is covered by the social cohesion advocates and to say where we have seen uh, their greatest impact. It's more on peace building uh, initiatives as well as um, uh, initiatives that build a, a sense of patriotism in our people, uh, building and restoring uh, their dignity, uh, especially after uh, they have been displaced due to some uh, social unrest uh, factors. Going to the programs that are talking uh, to women, we do have a couple of programs uh, because uh, the focus on women in the department is also an integrated focus. So even the program that I have mentioned now, uh, it's also having a component that is focusing on women. In addition to that, uh, we do have uh, programs that are geared towards a uh, GBVF uh, that are targeting women. We also have uh, programs that are geared towards uh, economic uh, empowerment through our targeted uh, group support uh, program. It's also targeted women. And through this one, we are also using uh, other women to support, uh, as an example, uh, places for the children uh, places for the aged, especially uh, looking at the aged uh, women. Um, we also have a, a program which is at the center in the department, which is uh, named Bakawafaz, which is a program that is uh, looking at issues of uh, making sure there is detection, there is prevention, there is a care support uh, to women that have been affected uh, by GBVF uh, incidences. And we also uh, engage these women to document their stories to educate uh, other women as part of the preventative uh, program. Um, I think uh, I've covered uh, the core of the critical programs in the department that are covering uh, women, though I could say all our entities as well they are now uh, being guided and encouraged to make sure that they do have uh, programs that are focusing on women. And of course, in our sport program, we also have a, a focus on women. Thank you. Chair, I would then uh, request that uh, Mr. Mabaso then uh, talks to issues of artists and um, then Mr. Ulen Kekana uh, speak to libraries and oral history. And then the CFO, uh, uh, Chairperson, has asked a very pertinent question about the Constitutional Court judgment and its impact on understanding. Uh, I would like the CFO to elaborate on that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Acting DDG. Uh, uh, good morning, Honorable Chairperson. Good morning, uh, members. Good morning, Minister. 
I'm going to briefly talk about issues that affect uh, artists as the question was raised, particularly around the issues of fees. Uh, firstly, uh, what preoccupies us uh, on a daily basis is really the life and the well-being of an artist, because as we are aware that they come from a sector that is to a large extent fragmented, uh, there are no standardized uh, uh, approaches to various things, hence even their uh, salaries or remuneration uh, is not standardized. Hence, we come with various initiatives as a department to try and intervene to ensure that ultimately we create an enabling environment for artists to, to flourish. So with regard to, to real fees, there are programs that internally as a department we, we initiate and we run where artists are given opportunities uh, to get some form of employment. For instance, we support uh, national and provincial flagships throughout the country. Your National Arts uh, Festival, your Makufe, Mapungube, all those major events that are aimed at stimulating local economic development, but also is opportunities for artists to earn a living. So I support the true MGE. Uh, uh, throughout uh, uh, the year. But further than that, we also run a program uh, called Cultural Seasons, where we uh, really expose South African uh, talent internationally through the Cultural Season programs. We take a number of South African artists uh, internationally to participate and uh, work with their counterparts abroad, but we also take them to ready go and showcase, like in the case of the uh, Venice Biennale, where we took a number of visual artists to go and showcase their work. We took a, a number of South African uh, writers to uh, Scotland recently, where they participated and presented uh, their literary works. So those are opportunities that are created. But further than that, we run, for instance, uh, we do have MGE and PSP, where we call for applications for South African arts practitioners to apply for funding so that they can really uh, be able to, to uh, continue with their work, their, product, their productions uh, and tour uh, uh, in, uh, inside in terms of a, a series of tours at local uh, theaters, uh, exhibit their works at local uh, uh, galleries. So those are part of some of the initiatives that we do as a department to make sure that at least there's that kind of uh, uh, support to artists. But you have started engagements also with Department of Labor to look at the status of an artist in a country. So how best can we begin to look at professionalizing the sector, uh, coming with uh, really uh, guidelines and conditions of services that are really will be able to, to support uh, their well-being because through COVID, we have realized how the sector was affected uh, as compared to, to other sectors. So those are some of the initiatives that we run as a department. With uh, regard to the second question was the theater and dance, the whole issues of the policies. I can confirm in this meeting that the theater and dance policy has been developed, has been approved. We have consulted with the uh, theater and dance practitioner throughout the country, uh, throughout all nine provinces, and uh, each province had also sent uh, people to be part of those uh, consultation pro uh, process, which culminated into a national workshop where the, uh, uh, the document was approved uh, by the sector itself is currently with the National Language Services for editing papers, but that will form as a guide in terms of how we go forward supporting both uh, dance and theater. In addition to that, we have also agreed that as a department that part of the challenge has been the issue of cultural infrastructure throughout the various provinces. And for dance and theater really to flourish, we must make sure that it's supported by proper infrastructure and we have started the process of assisting provinces to construct uh, theaters. Uh, we have uh, opened one in Northern Cape. We are currently in Limpopo supporting the, uh, the province there to construct a, a theater. We'll be going both to Northwest and Bumalanga to make sure that there is infrastructure so that uh, work can happen in that space. With regards to literary work, we through the office of the minister, we have appointed a panel of expertise to assist us to develop a book policy in the country. The panel has been meeting and they are working on developing uh, that policy, which 
culminate or ultimate will really guide us in terms of how we we support the book economy in the country and how to create opportunities for people who are interested in that space to make sure that they are supported throughout so i think those are some of the questions that were raised uh, and then finally we throughout the year we place artists in schools the 300 uh, artists that uh, mr ndima spoke about we place them is a long year program where artists go to various schools in the country and through that they really get uh, some uh, remuneration to make sure that at least they are supported in terms of them showcasing their skills uh, in supporting uh, kids in various schools thank you chairperson thank you if mr kekana can come in with regards to libraries and oral history and then CFO with regards to the constitutional court judgment. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Chairperson and the Honorable Members, the Acting DG and uh, colleagues. Um, the question from Honorable Christians relating to the links um, with the schools. <clears throat> um, there are a number of ways in which we are entrenching the partnership between the schools and the public libraries. First of all, at the national level, we have a coordinating structure that is coordinating and, uh, and providing oversight over the implementation of the grant. The National Department of Basic Education is sitting in that coordinating uh, structure. So at the national level, this is, uh, this is how we, we encourage the partnership between the schools and the, and the public libraries. But if you look at our grant framework, it is very specific. There's a certain amount of money that is ring fenced to ensure that uh, provinces are able to work with the provincial departments of education in the establishment of what we call dual purpose libraries, where um, you know, the, the contents and the material that is pro procured is also geared to support uh, curricular activities. So all the libraries that we, that we establish uh, are very close to the schools. And we establish that with a view that um, the learners are the biggest consumers of the public library services. So, so, so that partnership is very important. And, uh, and in fact, in many of the provinces, um, there are formal agreements between the Provincial Department of Sport, Arts and Culture, as well as the uh, Provincial uh, Department of Education um, to ensure that that partnership and the coordination um, in each of the provinces. But also I must say that at the national level, we've got flagship uh, programs and events where we are working very close with the schools. Uh, for instance, we've got library week, we've got Fundam Zanzi programs that we're working very closely uh, with the schools. <clears throat> and I must indicate that um, there is a current draft of the memorandum of, uh, of agreement that is under discussion between the two departments. In fact, tomorrow there's a meeting of the DGs to look at that um, uh, draft the memorandum of agreement, which also is going to formalize the partnership between the department and the Department of Basic Education. In respect of the question from Honorable Ndongeni uh, on the oral history uh, uh, program, uh, indeed, uh, uh, um, uh, there was a, a mechanism for people to connect online. Uh, we had about 100 people connected online to the conference. And also we had a number of radio stations like Muteo Lisedi, The Rock and uh, Lijue Liputa uh, radio stations that were con uh, assisting us to broadcast the events and the program um, in, in the region. We may not have the actual statistics of the people that were listening, but we do believe that um, through these radio stations, we have been able to reach as many people as possible uh, in the free state. And the lesson that we have learned, of course, is, is that going forward, um, um, all our events needs to be in a hybrid format so that, um, so that we're able to reach um, as many people as possible, even those who are unable to come uh, to the conference itself. Thank you very much, um, ADG. If CFO can come no. through. Okay, no, thanks, uh, DJ, and thanks, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, Honorable Members. On the question of the Constitutional Court, yes, indeed, uh, there was findings against the uh, National Treasury on the provincial procurement regulation of 2017, especially on the issue of the triple BEE. 
And in that note, uh, the findings was that from the 16th of February, 2022, a department cannot uh, uh, procure anything that is above the 30,000. So if you want to procure anything that is above 30,000, then you're supposed to get an approval of exemption uh, from the Minister of Finance, uh, which is Treasury. And because of that process, uh, uh, then it means everything that you procure between that date until the end of the financial year, then you must then request an exemption case by case. And that delay us in terms of us procuring and able to make sure that we spend 100% of our budget uh, check. And also maybe just to note that process uh, did overlap even to the next financial year uh, for the first quarter of the new financial year. Uh, I'll end there, Chair. Thanks very much. Thank you, Chair. I think that that's how far we are going in terms of uh, responses, Chair. Uh, I will need your further guidance. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, did, I didn't hear uh, any response to, or maybe there might have been a problem with my line <clears throat> about the inadequate or collaborate corroborating evidence. You know, I, 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 like the one what that worries me more is like uh, is this slide forty nine, which um, it's important to know that 60, 66 students were supported. Okay. And uh, however, there was incomplete or inadequate evidence to substantiate the support to five students. That is, there are five students that we cannot account for, but we have actually used money to support 66 students. But what happened to these five? Are they ghost students or what happened? You know, um, and then the other one that will be, that worries me again is the slide 52. Uh, in the other two projects, there were delays in the implementation and, and or inadequate evidence to support the work executed in the financial year. Well, amongst others, is one is Sar, Sar, Sarah Bartman Center of Remembrance, Winnie Mandela um, uh, House in Bradford. This one was in the papers. It was in the social media just some not very long time ago. Uh, Winnie Mandela Memorial uh, House, Memorial House, or Tambo Garden of Remembrance. Oh. Now, these are the things that for me, uh, I, I feel we haven't actually we're not giving enough evidence to, you know, explanation to say, where are we? Like with the Winnie Mandela uh, House of Memorial House and other such department, and how much money was used and what is the gap in terms of completion? And out of the money that we used, how much of it were, went into wasteful and whatever, or were the funds misused? If there is if yes, then what happened? What action did we take uh, to ensure that these things do not recur? Um, yeah, and if members feel that there are other questions that they feel they were not uh, uh, adequate or satisfactorily uh, answered, they can make a follow-up on such questions or even ask new questions. We still have some time. Um, yeah, that Chair, to me let, would... me, let me hand over to, we, we've noted the questions that you've asked. Uh, I've, I'm, I'm going to request uh, that Mr. Langefeld respond directly to the question that you have asked about the bursaries, as well as the direct questions that you have asked about uh, the legacy projects, which is Unima Tizela Mandela, Sarah Bachman, uh, and other projects that is listed there. Thank you, Chair you seem and to I think you will also be responding. From the, from, I can't really hear you. I can hardly get your voice. Oh, is it the same, Chairperson? Is it better now? Yeah, it is, it is better indeed. Yeah. I, I was saying, uh, Chairperson, uh, uh, I've noted the questions that you have asked, and uh, Mr. Langefeld will uh, respond to them directly. The one on the uh, bursaries. Uh, and the issue of uh, the lack of corroborating evidence, he will be able to explain that. And also 
the issues around uh, the legacy projects where we needed to have exhibition content being developed. He will also explain that. Thank you, Jefferson. Uh, thank you, uh, through, through you, Chair. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Ndiman. And uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Chair and uh, Honorable uh, members and, and, uh, and colleagues. Um, I'll start with the bursaries. Um, I think uh, Mr. Ndima has, uh, uh, to a certain extent, um, already explained that uh, with the bursaries, we are largely dependent on the um, universities. And um, the, uh, uh, um, for the submission of um, uh, uh, documentation related to the, you know, that would facilitate the transfer um, of the funds uh, to universities for the bursaries. And the key document is the memorandum of agreement. Memorandum of agreement uh, uh, that we sign with each university uh, uh, and uh, uh, together with the, the MOA is uh, supporting documents that would then uh, uh, go with that uh, 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 memorandum of, um, of agreement. And universities um, largely um, have challenges with uh, meeting the, the 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 deadlines, but also the requirements for documents to be um, in an original uh, format uh, to be um, acceptable by our uh, um, legal services uh, um, unit. In terms of the 66 students, indeed, um, all 66 students were were paid. Uh, they were not ghost students. They were students that went through the the uh, um, the selection uh, process of the department considered by the uh, selection committee and uh, um, uh, um, and bursaries uh, awarded to all 66 students it's just that when we eventually received the supporting documents from um, from uh, universities our legal services for the for the five students our legal services then advise that, uh, um, uh, you know, it is already after the academic year. So it is not, uh, it, will, it, it would not be um, appropriate to, um, to still sign a memorandum of agreement. We can then just uh, uh, pay the, the six students uh, um, uh, based on uh, um, approval by the accounting officer. So in terms of, of the technical indicator description as the acting DG indicated, the, the technical indicator, indicator description require a memorandum of agreement as verification source. Um, so when we reported for the, the, the six students, um, we could not provide that mem memorandum um, uh, of agreement because as advised by legal services, uh, because it was after the academic year, it was no longer necessary to, um, to, to pay uh, um, via memorandum of agreement. Thanks, Chair. I hope that uh, that um, addresses the, the, the question on the, the, the bursaries. Um, I must say that um, we have uh, uh, since um, resolved most of the challenges with regard to the um, to the, the, the bursaries, particularly the key one, which is uh, compliance by, by universities with the, the MOA and the supporting documents. Um, we've looked at best practice uh, um, within the department in, in other bursary programs, but also outside of the, of the department. And what seems to be working much better, Chet, is uh, that we, we sign a three-year memorandum of agreement with universities um, instead of a one-year memorandum of agreement where universities would have to, every year we would have, have to struggle and battle with un universities to get the, um, to get the, 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 um, the, uh, the verification sources. But secondly, what we've also done is we've brought all our um, timeframes forward so that we start the process much earlier in the, in the preceding year um, for the next academic year. 
so that uh, um, we are then able to uh, um, uh, uh, to 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 um, to to uh, um, get the documents in time from universities. In addition, we are also uh, um, you know we've we've um, started to to meet with universities more frequently. Um, collectively, but also individually, so that we agree on uh, roadmaps and timeframes, and we all um, adhere, both the department and the universities, we agree th with those timeframes and we document it in the memorandum of, of, um, of agreement. Then coming to the matter of, um, of inadequate uh, um, evidence, um, I think to a certain extent, the, the ADG also, um, uh, uh, what, in fact, the, the inadequate evidence with regard to the, the projects, the legacy projects, uh, Sarah Bartman, um, uh, Winnie Marquisela Mandela uh, uh, Museum in Brantford, as well as the O.R. Tambo uh, uh, Garden of Remembrance. Um, what happened in this instance was once again, um, the question of of our um, our technical uh, the technical indicator uh, description um, uh, uh, in terms of the 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 um, the title of the indicator it, it it says a number of heritage legacy projects where exhibition content is um, is developed and um, in terms of our planning. Um, for us, uh, uh, it, it involves a number of phases, and the first phase being the procurement phase, where we procure the expertise to then develop exhibitions for these uh, facilities. And I think um, the, 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 the uncertainty when we did the, the reporting was that uh, um, we did not explicitly indicate um, in the the, the technical indicator description that uh, procurement is part of the process. So when we, we, we reported, we had then indicated that, no, no, we are at a procurement uh, a phase. We are not yet at a phase where the exhibitions have actually been developed. Um, and uh, therefore all that we could pr provide as verification source in the multi-year projects, because all these projects are multi-year projects. Um, we could uh, therefore also only uh, report and provide verification sources for um, for procurement in in um, in these three instances, and um, the you know the the monitoring and evaluation process then concluded that uh, because uh, we had not included procurement in the the TID description. Uh, um, the evidence that we provided is not um, is not adequate. Um, that's the, the the second instance. But in terms of the the projects and 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 where they are, we have since uh, appointed uh, um, exhibition de development um, expertise for the Sarah Bartman Center of Remembrance, the Winnie Madikizela Mandela. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, museum uh, is uh, the the exhibition is is complete the the internal exhibition is complete and we are in the process of uh, uh, appointing a service provider for the uh, um, the clinic um, outside which was which was bombed so that clinic needs to be um, uh, um, restored uh, uh, and um, also interpretation uh, um, uh, in, once the service provider is appointed, will then uh, um, uh, develop and install interpretation to um, illustrate what the, the, the bomb clinic was then used for. The Over Tumble uh, Garden of Remembrance, uh, um, the construction is complete. Uh, the uh, equipment has also been um, installed. And all that is required there is electrification of the uh, um, of the site. Um, ESCOM has uh, disconnected the electricity, and uh, we are in the process of uh, um, uh, reconnecting the electricity. So uh, uh, the project is uh, to be complete at the end of this uh, this month. 
but uh, um, the, the service provider will still remain on site to then uh, come in, uh, test the equipment that has been um, installed in the Garden of Remembrance. Um, it's ICT equipment and digital content. There's an outdoor digital exhibition uh, um, at the OR Tambo Garden of Remembrance chat. Uh, um, but uh, as I say, the, the content, uh, all of it has been installed, but uh, uh, what is required is the testing. The service provider at the moment is using um, uh, generators, but it's not, it's not um, adequate. And um, we are just pursuing um, ESCOM then to, um, to reconnect. And that, that process is quite advanced to reconnect the, the, the electricity uh, um, to the site uh, since it has been uh, um, uh, uh, disconnected um, some years back. Thanks, Chair. I, I think that's um, the, those, um, I hope I've covered all of the, the, the areas uh, um, of the questions. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, are there further questions from the members? If, if not so, let me take this opportunity to thank everybody. The, is the minister still in the house? It doesn't look like uh, Chairperson, uh, Chairperson, you will recall that uh, he had already indicated that uh, by 11, he might have to attend. Yeah, yeah. I, <coughs> I remember that. Uh, DG, would you like to say some few words uh, as a enclosure? DG? Hello? Okay. I can I be allowed to, to just check if DJ is still uh, connected in the meeting? Otherwise, I'll have to come back and assist. It's a DJ. Yeah, no, if, if, if the DG is cut out of the meeting, I think let me take this opportunity to, to thank everybody who participated in this meeting and um, saying, you know, um, it was quite a good engagement. And if there are, if members feel that there are certain questions that they would like to ask, uh, they can send the question to the committee secretary, and then the questions will be given over to the department for written uh, answers. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, members of the committee will remain, so we deal with other committee issues. Thank you very much. You are released. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Chair President. Thank you, Chair. You're welcome. Uh, Noltando, Nol will you flight the minutes? <clears throat> Yeah, that's page one of the minutes, members. We've had this minutes for quite some time. Um, we'll move to, further to other pages. Yes, there we go. <clears throat> Are there matters that members would like to raise? Uh, with the minutes, comments, corrections. There's um
Thank you very much. There are the minutes members. Any comments, corrections? None. Is there any move of adoption of this minutes? Any move of adoption of the records of the of the meeting? I move Chair. For this opinion. Chair. I Do you hear me, Chair? Chair. Oh, Honorable Dongeni. I don't know whether there's a somebody who has adopted the minutes. If it's a somebody, if any honorable adopted, I'm seconded. Yeah, thank you. It was me, Gillian. Okay. Oh, honorable Gillian, and then seconded by Honorable um, Ndongeli. Um, a sorry, chair. Is there a sorry, chair? A program. Or whatever, no, um, no, uh, oh, 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 honorable Killian was not present in the meeting, yeah. So, honorable Gillian, you are not in the meeting, the last meeting. So, can we have a mover for adoption of the minutes? But Christians move, chairperson, yeah, uh, Christian moves, and then in Dongania's, um. Seconded. Thank you very much. Is there a program for that we need to adopt? Is there any other thing for the agenda, Multando? Sorry. No, there's nothing else, sir. If there is nothing, then um, let me thank the members for availing themselves for this meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Like I said, that if there are issues that members would write, like to raise, they can. Uh, send them to the to the department through the the committee secretary's office. Um, thank you, thank you, everybody. This meeting is adjourned. Bye, thank you. Recording stopped. <laughs>